Hey! And we're live. <laughs> Woo! Hey. Woo! All right. Welcome everybody to another session. <laughs> when we last left our intrepid heroes, Batman was dangling from the Empire State. Oh wait, wrong script. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> our heroes had just finished outwitting, outfighting, but not outshot putting a group of rather nasty ogres. The satin black moon bloom had been acquired and brought back to the wizard Irvin Galen, who used his alchemical lab to process and package it into a small cloth pouch. The group made their way back to the Vale. They stopped along the way at a cozy inn run by a kindly old dwarven woman named Helga Ironwolf uh, for a much-needed night of good food, good music, and solid rest. Upon returning to the Vale, they found the healer's hut empty except for one confused, extremely green apprentice who was of no help whatsoever. Splitting up to go search for clues to Uncle Steve's whereabouts, the party tripped over a magical MacGuffin, and both groups ended up arriving at the Dancing Minotaur to find, much to their surprise, Uncle Steve alive and well in the company of Irvin Galen. The incorrigibly annoying wizard drank his moonbloom tea as it was revealed to the party that Steve and Galen go way back and, yes, he has always been this pompous. Between the information provided by the party and the scrying that the wizard had been doing, Uncle Steve surmised that the dragon born with the jet black scales that the group encountered at the warehouse is a Dracolite, a dark mage who has gained additional power through worship and association with chromatic dragons and their god Tiamat. It is likely that the destruction of this cult of followers is a large setback, and that he will spend some time reconsolidating before emerging again. In this calm before the storm, the group must venture forth looking for someone or something to give them the upper hand against this foe. But before they embark on that journey, Uncle Steve leads the group to his house to show them something. Welcome back to Stuart Vale. I played a shot put. <laughs> well, played very that's, well. that's all I heard when you said shot put. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the moon moon key. Okay. You, Uncle Steve, and your crazy friends. <laughs> I think friends might be a strong word for what Kevin <laughs> is, but we'll, we'll go with it. Jackass. <laughs> okay, so you guys follow Uncle Steve to his modest house, not too far from the Minotaur. He ascends the three wooden steps onto his covered balcony, past the planters of herbs and flowers. He inserts a large, old-style metal key into the door lock. It unlocks with a satisfying clunk, and he opens the door. You walk through the sitting room and into his study. The walls are lined with bookcases, hundreds of volumes of lore, elegantly bound, meticulously kept, and organized. Uncle Steve walks over to one of the bookcases and peruses the books on the shelf. He places his hand on one of the leather-bound tomes, pulls it forward, and releases it. A subtle click is heard, and the bookshelf slowly swings forward, revealing a hidden room. Along the walls are plaques and hooks, on which are displayed various kinds of exotic weapons and implements. Standing along the north wall are four mannequins bearing ornate magical armor. To the south is a cabinet with glass doors forming a showcase, inside which an assortment of gems and artifacts can be seen. The remaining wall hosts a large desk. Uncle Steve walks up to a rather imposing-looking pike. I took this weapon off Argrath the Impaler, a most brutal orc warrior I met in battle many years ago. It was said that he once killed a hundred of the Juntu tribe's most capable warriors in a row during a single battle cry. If you've never heard of the Juntu tribe, Argrath would be why. <laughs> it's not quite the type of weapon that you use, Ruckus, but you definitely have the same enduring fighting spirit. Galen, would you please lend a hand? Oh, all right, Stephen. I suppose he did help with my ogre problem after all. <laughs> and my tea problem. <laughs> <laughs> Irvin Galen picks up the pike in one hand and turns towards Ruckus. Ruckus, be a good boy and give me a swing of those hammers, will you? Uncle Steve gives Ruckus an approving nod. Yes, the wizard is asking you to hit him with your crack hammers. <laughs> Smash! <laughs> As your hammers with fly... Pleasure. <laughs> your funeral. <laughs> As your hammers fly through the air towards the smug face of the wizard, he holds up the pike as if to block. At the moment of contact, the pike and the wizard both turn ethereal and your hammers pass right through. A golden shimmer appears as your hammers cross the pike and follows them through. At the end of your swing, both your hammers glow with a faint magical eminence which slowly dies down. The wizard smiles and lays the pike back in the corner where it is found. You brutally clobber Uncle Steve with your hammers. He's <laughs> <laughs> <His> unconscious. <laughs> you shouldn't have been standing so close. It was his own fault. You need some tea. Stats. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Uncle Steve opens a drawer on the large mahogany desk along the west wall. He reaches in and pulls out a long, slender case. 
He places it on the desktop and opens it. Inside is a wand carved of a type of wood none of you have ever seen. It's deep red in color, almost purple. Marzia, for your tenacity and unending strength of will, this is the wand of inevitability. May it help you reap the rewards of your perseverance. <laughs> and roll higher than five. <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> Thanks, oh, Zorka! <laughs> Who else was thinking that? <laughs> Wait, you, you, were a girl. you made me the Green Ranger because I'm an orc? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's because you're black. I made you the Green Ranger because you act Jewish. I mean, no. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Okay, you get a wonk if you're a girl. That's right. Thanks. Is, is it, does it have a heart? Please tell me it has a heart. <laughs> hold on, hold on. He hands the wand to Galen. Two who tosses. <laughs> he hands the wand to Galen, who tosses it in the air. It disappears at the apex of its arc in a purple puff of smoke. A moment later, a plain branch of the same wood falls into his hand, and the smoke coalesces into a wave of magicka, which wraps itself around Marzia's loot. The loot changes color, moving a few shades towards the dark hue of the wand, and its surface gains a light sheen. Ooh, Uncle Steve turns towards Riswin. My dear Riswin, your mother would be proud to see you today. Your commitment to those around you is an unbroken word, a foundation of the strongest stone on which you build your life and from which you gather strength. I know that your journey is far from complete and that there's much that you will have to face in the times ahead. He holds out his hand for your axe. I... <laughs> Yar. He takes it in one hand and pulls a book out from the bookshelf with the other. He places the axe down on the desk in front of him and opens the book to the marked page. He looks down at it and speaks a single word. Incipio. The book unbinds itself before your eyes, breaking down into its base components. The axe hovers a meter off the desk. The old, tired leather bindings on the handle unwrap themselves, and the leather from the book's cover takes its place, stitching itself in tight spirals with a magical golden thread. The pages run themselves along the length of the blade. All tarnish fades away, and the edge shines with sharpness. It falls into Uncle Steve's grasp, and he hands it back to you. May this reward you with every oath you fulfill, and give you renewed vigor for the challenges ahead. I'm proud of you. After giving out the first three weapons, Uncle Steve sighs as he searches around. Wave of tears. <laughs> My mother would be proud. After giving Why did out, you poison her with all that booze. <laughs> <laughs> the poor liver couldn't handle it. Tally was telling me about her character's bio, and she said her parents died of alcoholism. Heroic. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, Uncle Steve poisoned your parents to death with alcohol poisoning. She's like, they're not really. I'm like, oh. Right. I'm like, that isn't the background I read. <laughs> I'm like, they died, and then I told about the man with the metal jaw. I'm like, no, they died a heroic dwarven death of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> That's the way they would have wanted to go. Exactly, the way they wanted to go. So you're saying? Uh, after giving out the first three weapons, Uncle Steve sighs as he searches around the room for something to bestow upon Clank. Coming up empty, he turns towards Clank with a look of despair. He begins to apologize when Galen pipes up. His weapon is perfectly fine! Just look! The wizard waves a hand towards Clank, causing his kopesh to float up out of its sheath. It hovers in midair, and the rust falls away from it, revealing a series of runes engraved along the edge. That won't last long. Triggered by the sight of the runes, a burst of memory floods through Clank. A blade of the face strike. The words escape Clank's mouth before he realizes that he said them. Indeed, says Galen. Or were you just hacking away with it like a glorified butter knife? Good heavens. <laughs> Uncle Steve points to the rust stain on the carpet and looks over at the <clears> wizard. <throat> You're going to clean that up, right? The wizard lets out an indignant <clears throat> and snaps his fingers. The rust disappeared and Uncle Steve smirks. <laughs> Uncle Steve turns to the group. You all put your lives at risk to save the veil and find healing for my wounds. You, you all have the heart of hearts of heroes within you, but now I must ask of you more than I've ever asked before. This Dracolite is not going to stay in hiding forever. As I mentioned at the Minotaur, I need you to go and find a way that we can defeat this fiend, or at least keep him at bay. Once, long ago, there was a thriving civilization <coughs> whose downfall was said to have been caused by dragons. All of their cities were razed to the ground save for one, Akrotiri, where it is said that they made their last stand. The ruins of Akrotiri are said to be somewhere across the Sea of Ide, east of the Cassirian Kass Forest. There you may find clues to the secrets of the dragon's power, and hopefully something about how Akrotiri survived without being raised to the ground. Alternately, you can speak to my old adventuring companions, Maximus and Calissa. Last I heard, they had bought a ship and were running trade between the tropical islands of the south and the northern city of Muldoon, not too far from the mining encampment where Riswin grew up. 
Either way, you'll have to make your way to the port city of Cambridge and arrange transport on a ship. These places aren't easily reachable by land. So I'm going to take a quick sec to actually give you guys <laughs> the little item cards for what you guys actually got. Uh, Clank? You can just tell me the name line because I'm just going to add it from the... Uh... Oh, there's the name right, here. right away. <laughs> Apparently it's a face strike weapon. Yeah. You got the wand of inevitability. <laughs> the wand of missing less. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Zordon. <laughs> you, you get the weapon of is fulfilled. Aww. Oh. And Jim, yours is actually the level 6 version. <clears throat> you get the plus 2 on your challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This weapon is always eager to be introduced to a new uh, to a fresh enemy, much like Ruckus. Ah, <laughs> oh, you'd like that one. Please, no. Uh, I don't think you have a choice in that one. <laughs> yes. If I miss a target on an at-will attack, the next time I try, I get a plus two item bonus. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good item for you. <laughs> yes. So yes, technically, if you miss, you get plus three on the next roll. Wow. Great. So it, it, even if you roll a five, you'll still miss. <laughs> Correct. But by less. And but by less. less. Uh, uh, slightly uh, better. But is, it, is, is it? Is it? In, does it keep? No, it doesn't stack. It doesn't escalate. It no, doesn't it does go to plus it's, four. I have to use so, it before the end of my next turn. I see. Oh. What's up, Alan? Oh, um, the fact that you can use it as an implement. Basically, yeah. Yeah. It, you are going to still use your probably your um, the mug. Yeah. The mug. Yeah. But. By having your wep- weapon count as an implement, when you add it to your character sheet, it's going to add your implement oh, bonus bonuses. onto the weapon. Onto all your weapon attacks, rather. What the fuck? Yes. Wow. It so means your spells are cast through... Through the weapon, axe now, yeah. yeah. Through the axe. Yeah. Which is really useful, because so you, you get, get like, bonus from the axe. You, you get the bonus, yeah. You don't get your proficiency bonus, but you do get... The enhancement bonus. You get an enhancement bonus, which is useful. But yeah, you don't get like because you're plus three from proficiency, you don't get that. Yeah, wait, why, do, why would you lose that? Oh no, no, I see what you mean. So some still gets some that my attacks, some attacks, my attacks are spells. Yeah. Well, right, the only one that right, is right. is my is one that uses my holy symbol. So right, yeah. yeah. the The one that uses your holy symbol will say that you you do it through the Stein. Yeah, but because this counts as the same thing, your non spell attacks should get a bonus from from it as well. But. The other, the other part of it, obviously, is when yeah. you kill something um, that had your oath of enmity on it. The next attack you make deals an extra one d six damage. Yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, <laughs> la, 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 that's la, la, that's why it's called a weapon of oaths fulfilled because she fulfills the oath by killing it and then gets a bonus to her next. Oh, mine is neat too. It's uh, obviously it's got the enhancement bonus of so yeah. plus one. Uh, it's got critical bonus. Uh, as a standard action, you can like throw a mirror image of it that you can make as a melee basic attack, as if you were up to twenty squares away. Yeah, <laughs> you may make a, you make a melee basic attack as a range twenty attack with this weapon. That's cool. Yeah, even cooler than that <clears throat> is the other power that has the daily power. Yeah, the daily power, which is a free action. You hit an enemy with an attack using this weapon. Effect, teleport the target 10 squares to a space adjacent to you. Yeah. So basically, he can pull out his Kopesh, go as if he's going to throw it. The Kopesh stays in his hand, a magical version of it appears and flies through the air and hits the enemy up to 20 friggin' squares away. And then, if he hits with that attack, he can choose to use his daily to be like, yeah, and he teleports to me. It's the get over here weapon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's the, we needed something to deal with ranged weapon, is what it really is. <laughs> you, stop throwing stuff at me. <laughs> <laughs> get over here. Uh, Jim's got the only weapon with a plus two enhancement bonus, so he's got some uh, nice stats on that. What was the secondary ability on yours? Or- uh, deal 1d6 extra damage when you hit someone at full health. Yeah, so basically every time every time he picks on a new target, as long as they haven't taken any damage yet, he just goes through. And- oh, wow. That's nice. pretty awesome. Hence the part of the story about that orc who took down like a hundred of their best fighters because he was taking everyone in one swing and then his next swing got a bonus and his next swing got a bonus and his next swing got a bonus. So. It's a, if that story is about Marzia, it would have been about Marzia flailing wildly while a hundred fighters Thanks. chopped her to bits. <laughs> <laughs> But Marzia did get something that you're, 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 a, you're a lover, not a fighter? 
That's right. <laughs> you're a singer, not a fighter? Yes. <laughs> I'll be okay. Sing, sing, sing. And we won. Okay. It's so uh, I'm going to take a quick step backward, actually. Um, back at the warehouse, when you guys finish off that battle, um, I had you guys all roll Arcan- Arcana um, afterwards to figure out what you guys knew about the situation. Mm-hmm. Now that Uncle Steve is back on his feet and but you know he put his head together with Galen and heard what you guys said, you guys now have the benefit of the full understanding. So as if you guys had all rolled 25 plus on the Arcana. Um, so I'm just going to read out what that was from back then, just so you guys get a, a, the full idea of what's going mm-hmm. on here. Yep. So, <clears throat> keep, I haven't edited this. This is literally yeah. as if you guys are still standing in the warehouse. Okay. You walk around the room and examine it in great detail. Based on the adornments of the ritualists, the pieces of parchment lying on the ground, the altar, the statue, and the drake that was caged over a sacrificial pit, you get a very clear idea of what they were trying to accomplish here. The six ritualists surrounding the drake were channeling a spell to keep the drake subdued but conscious for the duration of the ritual. The dragonborn with the raven black scales was clearly the leader, and he was being assisted by ritualists that picked up bows and the chaplain with the razor claw staff in a transference ritual. The aim of the transference ritual is to pull magical energy energy out of the sacrificial object, in this case the drake, through an intermediary acting as a lens, the chaplain, and finally to the recipient, the black scale dragonborn. Along with the items associated with the transference ritual, there is plenty of evidence that chromatic dragon worship and worship of the evil god Tiamat has been going on here. You figure, based on his ability to summon a motherfucking dragon, that the raven... Does it have to say motherfucking dragon? (laughs) It does. In (laughs) both. In (laughs) both. I'm a motherfucking dragon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the raven black scale dragonborn is likely a dracolite, a mage who has gained additional power through worship and association with dragons and their god. It looks like he's trying to acquire power above and beyond what his private study and worship could bring him. He's using these cultists and this sacrifice to amass power. He may even be trying to magically transform into a dragon, if not just acquiring their powers. This does not bode well. He's dragon groupie in the suck up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I do have a dragon groupie that uh, we never got to meet, but anyway. (laughs) Save it for any day. Okay, so you guys all have your fancy new shtick. Um, uh, You guys can... uh, I never got to try and hit a wizard with mine. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very disappointed. (laughs) I would have missed anyways. That's true. So you guys, um, basically, uh, Uncle Steve has... uh, you guys have let yourself out of uh, out of his place, kind of thing, um, and now you guys get to decide which of the two uh, paths you wish to pursue amongst yourselves. So go to an ancient city. Go to an go to an ancient or city that you're only find sort of his old uh, adventuring buddies. Yeah, yeah. I'm more interested in the ancient city, um, especially since I do like ancient cities. You know, with the Wisp of half memory that I have. Ancient city <laughs> sounds sounds, sounds like, like yeah. This might give me some clue to what the hell's going on with who the hell I am. <laughs> but we could meet people who have traveled with Uncle Steve. They probably have all kinds of fun stories about him. I bet them. They're not that great. Thank <laughs> heaven. And actually, he does think they are pretty great. <laughs> he, he, has, he has briefly met them, yes. Side note. <laughs> Side note. <laughs> Clank actually thinks they're cool. He just likes the ancient city better. Clank does like the idea of the ancient city better. That does sound much cooler to Clank than, you know, Maximus and what's-her-face. I wrote it down. <laughs> I think it's Callista, but I could be wrong. Callista, I was close. Maximus Stormblade. <laughs> yes, Maximus Stormblade and Calissa, the cleric. <laughs> She's like Cher. She doesn't have a last name. <laughs> She's too cool for that. Last name. Riswin, Ruckus, input. Also, water. Not so much? Not as well. I mean, they're, they're sailing no matter what, but these yeah. two are on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> they're on a boat! Well, from... from what Uncle Steve was saying, I think we're going to have to go on a boat. Yes, yeah, Clank is rusty enough. <laughs> is the never salty rusty sea enough. air is not going to help. <laughs> Clank is never rusty enough. <laughs> well, now, the consideration for Riswin, don't know if you caught it, but 
Muldoon, the city that they're running the trade routes between the tropics and Muldoon. Was close to my home that yeah. I ever grew up in, yeah. Yeah, so you'd be familiar with the area, even though you as a player are not currently familiar with the area. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it really comes down to, like, cause at, at the moment, Uncle Steve is throwing one hell of a mission on us. Find this fuck off Dracolich and stop him! Yeah, yeah, I believe in your power, go ahead and do it! <laughs> well, you believe in us, Uncle Steve, sure! <laughs> it's more like, shit, 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 we're in trouble, guys, go find something, anything. Where is he getting his power? How does this work? <laughs> Worst case scenario, bring back the guys that I, I had helped me defeat a dragon once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm steering from, is that these people have actually taken down a dragon, if this guy becomes a dragon... How do people have taken down a dragon? May not be a bad idea. We're gonna we're gonna need the backup. How many years ago was that? It doesn't matter. It's still a fucking dragon. They gave us some input. At least fifteen. They survived a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. They still survived. Wait. What kind of dragon? How big? Red dragon. See. Okay. You've heard thirty thousand. Asking Uncle people. Steve right yeah. now. What kind of dragon? <laughs> uh. Uncle Steve um, loves to embellish his stories. Of course he does. Um, and of course, this has become... Give me a fucking chromatic white dragon or some bullshit. Yeah, this has been a story of the ages. Um, you guys have all heard every version of this story except probably the right <laughs> one. one. <laughs> but yes. Um, but one thing that you do know is that they killed this dragon when you were five. So not that. <sighs> Good times. Mm-hmm. Good times. Yes. You were not present. <laughs> Mike was there. They did not take a five-year-old to kill the dragon. <laughs> Come on, man! Dwarven rite of passage! Kill the dragon! You can walk. Come kill the dragon. <laughs> Hold this axe. You're just, like, falling over. Trying to lift This is the best day ever! <laughs> Oh my gosh, we've got time still. <laughs> Is there no dragon game? Dragon! <laughs> no, dragon, you will taste like. Where is that baby guy? Dragon! <laughs> little baby wings. Oh shit! Hey, your little baby feet fell off. <laughs> oh, you lost your baby legs. <laughs> Ruckus has absolutely no input. <laughs> Other than, they're all old. <laughs> City, the people, old people. Yes. What? What? Um. What is in this city that will help us figure out how the fuck? Some to sort this of power that was able to resist the nation of dragons. Basically, the the what you got from Uncle Steve is that this civilization would have been burned entirely to the ground by dragons. Had it not been for X amount of power source. Whatever it was, this one last city. All of the other ones have been burned to dust. Mm-hmm. This city is still standing. First one, fell over the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Third one, burn down, fell over, then taking the swamp. The fourth one, that one stayed up. <laughs> so, so yes, whatever it was in this city, there was something that allowed them to fight off the dragons. Now, of course, going from an entire sprawling civilization to a single city probably is what ended up doing them in in the end. But yeah, all the inbreeding. They yeah. they survived. <laughs> Damn inbreeding. <laughs> the power of inbreeding. So, that's why they need It's it. a fucking city of beard strokers. I knew it! <laughs> that's what we're going to take out the dragon. Fucking dwarf, line of dragon, go! <laughs> Dragon's like, ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> Dragon's head explodes. Ah, it worked! Everything went according to plan. The master plan has worked! Thanks. Um, okay. So as you guys debate, I'm going to say that you... You know, make your make way. way south towards... Yeah, you gather all your things, put together your... You know, at this Probably point you guys are old hat at getting together all the stuff you need to leave town. <laughs> and you gather your things together and head south. And both versions are in like the complete opposite direction of each other, aren't they? Either way, you're going to have to go through the port city of Cambridge. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to travel south, go through the main city. But once you get to that port city, you're going to have to hop the right boat. Or the boat you want. We're on a boat! Yeah, that's what I mean, like both... <laughs> yeah. They're in opposite directions, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, we can't just hop one boat to yeah, such and such a place and take left. Could we... Well, Calissa and Maximus have a boat. Could we find them and then talk them into sailing their boat to the place, to the city? Yeah, that's what I was is, thinking, is yeah. There a, is there a sea... Like, do we have to go to a different sea or something like that? Like, can No, we, no, they, you, can, you can get there. <laughs> it's all connected. Poor Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ruggis, carry that boat. 
<laughs> no, if you, if you guys want to want to go try and find uh, Calissa and Maximus and try to convince them to you know come out of retirement and go with you guys to the ancient city, that's up to you. Or our, our better option might be go city. to the city, see if we can find said power source. If we have that, that might be a better way to say like, hey, we got this dragon stomping egg. Come with us and help. Like, <laughs> well, we can either so maybe more we can get to the yes. city and see if <laughs> they're there, there yeah. too because. Combining the two would be awesome. Yeah, but from the sounds of it, as we get to the port city, we gotta figure out, we either go to both the agent city or the boat to where they are. Right. Yeah. They so. maybe, I don't know, maybe they're in the port city. Who knows? We'll ask like, around. What's yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll go to the port city, look around. If they're not there, I'd probably go into the agent city, at least seeing what we can find. Every time we say two... that, it sounds like you're saying the Asian city. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want my game? Want my game? Oh, God, that beer. <laughs> Hitting the table. You're making the mic go. Blah, 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 blah. Well, the mic is already maxed. With it today. Not, that's fine. It's when it starts. When people hit the table or something, it, it goes like a really loud pop noise in the recording. Nice. Well, I can't help it. Pop, the fucking it beaver. Has to make a pop noise. I fucking beaver, man. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. No more, no more messing with the mic. We'll edit that out. No, we won't. That's too much work. <laughs> Okay. Well, let's go to the port city to start then. Yes. Okay. Do you guys? Frank needs to get a fancy hat and some dapper clothes. I'm sure you'll be able to find a fancy hat and dapper clothes. You get like a dapper cape, but that's probably. Oh, like Clank needs a dapper cape Damn it. too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no capes. <laughs> Clank doesn't fly. He's okay. <laughs> Start to do more. And neither does anything else in this universe that you know of. What dragons? Oh, I do. Then what about Riz? <laughs> Riz from flies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Pegasi. What about Pegasi? I don't know that there are for sure Pegasi in this. Uh, we need to go hunt down Pegasi. I hear that the other, other, other white meat. <laughs> like spark <laughs> like unicorns. Okay, Spark is on board for that. <laughs> <laughs> we should fly a horse now. Well, we, have, we have to capture two of them so that they can mate, and I can have a constant supply of unicorn slash Pegasus meat. <laughs> pegacorn meat. Yes. Pegacorn. We now must have a, a Pegacorn. Agreed. <laughs> you it's magically have, delicious. If you guys unifier. can find one, and if you can capture one, and then you can slay one, you, you know, I'll let you eat one. <laughs> yeah, right. You got no All right. that point. <laughs> Fuck the dragons! On to the Pegasus! Don't do it! Don't do it! The dragons! I prepared all the What? Red dragon, you're white! Out of the way, red dragon! There's a Pegasus there! <laughs> Well, <laughs> I won't be needing this. <laughs> <laughs> when he went crazy, he really? to kill everybody. <laughs> Why do you put a fireplace there? <laughs> Crocs fall, everyone dies. <laughs> okay, so it's Port City. Right, yeah, yeah. We're on our way. Yeah. With that stuff. So you, <laughs> so you guys may, make your way south. Um, I'm just, i got to figure out where we are in the timeline of the day. Hundred miles. Okay, so you guys, um, when you got back, you didn't really like. Did you guys want to spend night in town before you take off? It is well, we late well, afternoon, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. let's take a, sp- a comfortable night here. We're not. Yeah, we're not that much of a hurry. That it, it's a long enough journey. Plus, we have to sail a sea. Getting yeah. one last night's comfort. I mean, not that Clank really cares about getting a comfortable night's sleep, no, but, but he knows about the weakness of, of the... his human slash. There's not human, a single human, human in this group. Human like compatriots. Oh, yeah, human there totally isn't. There's Uncle Steve. We got zero humans. <laughs> Damn right. I just like that he's concerned about comfort. Just go, like slow pan over to the abandoned masonry place. Like, where's his bed? <laughs> bed? <laughs> <laughs> that, you see that slab of granite over there? Yeah, bed. <laughs> His bed could be anywhere. He just powers down in a corner. But yes, delaying one night <laughs> yes. is not going to be the end of the world. No. And that gives everybody a chance to... At the end of the campaign, one night! What did you say? <laughs> one <laughs> night! I was going to ask, do any, do any of you guys have a pencil like a board? Do you get the Hello Kitty pencil? <laughs> or any of these. I can't reach. I can't reach. There's a jillion pencils in there, too. Now that John has asked, I will remove the pencils. Hooray! Pencils! <laughs> remove them to keep them away from John. <laughs> exactly. The gym may not have these pencils. They are, th- these are player-only pencils. Woo! So yes, we'll take a rest in the camp, or the, the town of uh, Sewervale, and we will head out the next day. Alright, so you guys head out at dawn, because dawn, good time to head out. 
Um, you make your way so Lieutenant Hicks on guard. This is true, yes. No, the same um, the same rando guard that you guys passed by Strange last Greenhorn? time. Greenhorn? Awesome. Yeah. Where, yes. where is Lieutenant Hicks? Um, you asking me? The, well, the guard, yeah. Oh, okay, well. Um, <laughs> who, who's in the post that Lieutenant Hicks is usually occupying? Yeah. He, Even though we asked for him to get a vacation, we weren't expect, expecting him to actually get one. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> glad, we, I'm yeah. glad if he got Well, we asked. The guy said no. So obviously something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the guard there says that he doesn't know. He hasn't uh, seen him in a while, but that is not abnormal. They changed the guard rotations. He could be anywhere in the city. Oh, he my God. Him. He's the Black Dragonborn. <laughs> no! Oh, God. It was me! Oh, Hold no. on! Well, Guard Hicks won! We, who sent us to the, the warehouse? Mm. Guard Hicks. <laughs> Actually, he's a deity. <laughs> Pointing us in the right direction. Yes. He, he's our Gandalf. He's a prophet? Lieutenant yeah. Hicks is our Gandalf. <laughs> No, no, he's Mr. Rogers. Because didn't you know that in 3.5 you could actually worship Mr. Rogers as a deity? That's horrible. Apparently Sean looked this up on the internet. Okay. Okay. Yes. Whatever Wouldn't works. be a lot of fun for PCs, though, because then you can't kill anything. <laughs> Only if they won't be your neighbor. <laughs> oh. This is the ultimate show, Dad. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. So you, ma- make your way- power. you make your way south on the now familiar path. You go, <laughs> you go past the the through the farmlands, past the farmhouses. Um, you know, one old uh, farmer's wife uh, waves at you guys as you go by. She seems to have recognized you from last time. Off you. <laughs> we stare at her suspiciously. <laughs> she goes yeah, back. back. <laughs> she she goes back to hoeing her, her garden or whatever. <laughs> she goes back to being a hoe. I mean, hoeing her garden. <laughs> Um, I so pass to it there. Time to find my turn to hooking. <laughs> so yeah, the bitch mom remembers. The bitch mom remembers the drop of our seven when everyone had to turn into a hooker. Of course, no one had money. <laughs> <laughs> They're hating beats. They're hating beats. Back to the campaign. <laughs> Three hours and get this lovely pail. <laughs> These are hard times, we're, John. We're just like a couple of ten things and now we're watching a donkey show. We're following the numbers of hard times. It was the summer of hard times. Hard times. <laughs> Hard farmers, hard wives, <laughs> hard times, part three. <laughs> hard work right. animals. So, skipping past the part where we've completely ruined any kind of <laughs> seriousness, seriousness of us hey, leaving our town. I, I always said that this campaign should never take itself too so, seriously. That's your wife's cheating on you. Abby, <laughs> shut up. You're not here. Uh, <laughs> I can farm. <laughs> Get out. Oh, God. All right. So, past the farmlands, through the forested areas. And over the hills we go. And over the hills you go. Yeah. Past that lovely little bed and breakfast you guys stayed at last time. Quick to white black grandma's house. <laughs> no, she's gonna yell at us again. <laughs> now she may be blind. I'll up your your backside. Now, John, I may be a black man. Uh, so, eventually, after most of a day's travel, you um, crest a set of hills. And you see in the distance the outline of the, the port city of Cambridge. It is quite an impressive sight to see. How long did it take us to get there, sorry? The majority of the day. Okay. Then later travel, like, we're, we're talking it's there? Uh, know, late that, afternoon, supper almost, yeah, kind of thing. The, same color to me. Um, the, port ci- the port city of Cambridge, actually I can pass this around, is surrounded by a much more That's impressive bad, wall than good, Stuart Vale is. Well. Their wall is uh, double-layered, they have ramparts, towers, and not only is the wall a very solid wall, but they, being a fairly rich trade city, have gone through the the pain of taking white marble slabs, cutting them thin, and using them to sort of plate the wall to make the wall look fancy. It, 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 it serves no other purpose because the wall itself is a stone wall. Plank is very impressed by the useless ostentatiousness of a marble-plated defensive structure. There's that's like right. a rich duke somewhere in this town that wants sure. everything to be just so. There's so if I was an orc and I was going to get a raiding party in here, that is the weakest point. <laughs> yes, that is the place you would want to attack. 
<laughs> That's where all the guards are. <laughs> That's the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> or it's like, hmm, no palisades. <laughs> so intense. Might take around <laughs> all the way across Three the weeks. city. <laughs> oh, yeah. Orcs are, orcs are known for their sieging ability. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we throw wave of, after wave of our own men until like, the city falls. Does that bring in French? It never fails. Pile exactly. See? GM understands. GM understands. Go the work pile. The weak ones go first, so you can use their body as a ladder to get over the wall. <laughs> and the strongest orcs to survive goes back for breeding rights. <laughs> exactly. So intense. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back to the farm way and the <laughs> farm times. <laughs> Strongest farming half work you've ever seen. <laughs> we need to breed us some strong sons. <laughs> you can raid a small village with just a hoe. <laughs> Don't talk about my mom like that. <laughs> Your mother's a saint. <laughs> so, that you made your father. <laughs> you guys make your way up to the to the gates. Uh, the gates on this side um, are at this point they're open. There's no major, uh, you know, uh, emergency threat. or whatever emergency or threat. The, so the, they see ruckus and immediately close the gates. <laughs> no, no, they've they've seen. <laughs> they, they haven't seen an orc chef before, but they have definitely seen orcs that. Are not necessarily completely bothered. Traveling with my apron or a giant chef hat. You totally no. should be, though. No one has gotten me a chef hat yet. Then I will Plus, get you one. You can get a chef Plus, hat. Plus, I have not earned that title. <laughs> when when <laughs> Plant gets his not... fancy nobleman's hat, you can get a chef hat. No, no, no. In the future, it will happen that a magical item will be given to to, uh, to uh, Ruckus, and it will be a chef hat. And whenever he eats food at his extended rest, he will get a bonus. That is what will happen. <laughs> Says not the DM. All right, fair enough. <laughs> you can make it happen. <laughs> I suppose if he believes in your power. He does. I am in Sheffield. <laughs> so what you're saying is, Ruckus is going to go into another city and go into a friggin' bake off. Yes. That's it. He will become the Iron Chef. It'll be amazing. <laughs> we'll get him. No, I no, would no. like to you draw your attention to the name chef. of my weapon. Mm-hmm. Challenge seeking weapon. <laughs> I thought the name of your weapon was. Um, what did you say? There's lefty and tenderizer. Lefty and tenderizer. <laughs> this one's lefty. Someone must be righty. That's just stupid. This one's tenderizer. <laughs> what? That's what? That's what? But yes, I'm not saying that they obviously would be like, oh my god, an orc chef. But what I'm, but you know, they wouldn't necessarily be able to tell right away that you were an orc chef. No, yes. unless you had a banner that said, you know, come it, see the great orc chef. Right, but if you walked up to anybody, I don't think they're going to close the gates over one orc. No, he, they're not, and they're he's not traveling to... with the party. He's traveling with the party. And... That would be a very, very, like, paranoid city. <laughs> it's an orc! Just <laughs> racist. No greenies. Shut down everything. No greenies? Shut down. There's an orc on the streets. Kill all the peasants. It's too late for, uh, for them. <laughs> what? They won't survive anyways. <laughs> Just an orc! Take me down to the paranoid city. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> were they, were they the lock down the city? <laughs> yes. Around the city with city? No, yeah, you can. Yeah. If Lady Gaga is not an artist, you totally can. Lady Gaga is not an artist or a musician. <laughs> Have you heard her play piano without the, the whole Lady Gaga get up? <laughs> she actually it's can sing, and unlike half the, the other artists well, out there. If you're city with city, that's not cool. No, she, ran, she rhymed. Um, oh, fuck. She rhymed something with like, the Latin version of the exact same word. Oh, she, she's rhyming the same word. That's cool. She's rhyming the same yes, word. Yes, I know that. Yes. I just can't remember which song it is. She's the performance uh, artist. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys are making one small uh, clerical error here. Her writers have rhymed the okay, same word. Right. There you so, go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we, we approach the gates. You approach the gates. The the guards aren't uh, giving you guys any hassle. You can walk right through the gates. A metal man and a green right. man and a dwarf and a... They've seen Stranger. I mean, this is a port city. Okay? Okay. That's true. Some of the sailors Understand. that come off these ships... <laughs> some of the sailors that come off these ships... Uh, yeah, there Don't are worry, some strange, strange things. Don't worry, one day that raiding party you wish for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Plank past ruckus on the shoulder console and the... It's okay. So, quick, everyone, get your orc costumes. We're gonna raid this city. They'll be afraid of you once they get to know you. We raid this city, rock and roll. <laughs> we raid the with rock and sand clans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 I 
And they both have flock of seagull haircuts, even though like they're both bald. Okay. Yeah. 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 The most hairline. epic wigs you've ever seen. Yeah. Rebel yes. isn't bald. He is now. Mm. <laughs> oh, you were drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> now it's more rage and his hair is red. Oh shit! <laughs> All right. Um, so the city's fairly large. As you walk in on the the, the main street, or well, the the main gate street at the north, um, you guys see that it is a very well kept city. The um, it also was planned out a bit better. The streets are very wide, so there's lots of room for carts to go by and uh, each other and whatnot. Unlike Stuart Vale, where it's like, if two carts got side by side, you better be squeezed up against the, the <laughs> side of the building, you know. Um, at least one trampling every week in Stuart Vale. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the streets are also well paved with interlocking bricks. It's not uh, cobblestone. Not gold. Um, um, not, nice no, not bricks. gold. No, are they marble? Just, no, they're just regular <laughs> old clay bricks. The like, yellow brick? They're not yellow bricks. No, they they are your regular <laughs> I, I reddish to, brown clay bricks. I have brick. to pause this for one half second because I just remembered. There's a party that I ran with, that, that I GM for, who would by now have decided that they're going to come up with some kind of intricate plan to pull the marble <laughs> off of the walls to sell it. <laughs> no, that's just... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on. Sadly, I'm not playing a thief this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not here to strip the city of its riches. <laughs> <laughs> Yumi, where are you? <laughs> Yumi's not here, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Jumping. yeah if you guys had been like a group full of thieves, I'd have been like, well, let's see how good you are. <laughs> uh, I want to steal his pants. Nice. Why do you want his pants? I don't want them. I I just want to know if I can steal them. <laughs> God. Oh, no, see, the real yeah. challenge is stealing his underpants while leaving his pants intact. <laughs> Amateurs can do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. steal his steal his name. My name is. <gasps> it's sold for power. <laughs> no, no, steal it, then sell it for power, so you don't have to sell your own. <laughs> I stole some. I sold someone else's name for power. <gasps> How does one? <laughs> Anyhow, moving on. Enough sidetracking. So, the city, uh, as you get closer to the center of the city, density gets a little, uh, a little tighter. Um, the, the buildings start to turn more towards having storefronts. Um, and there are lots of people. The hustle and bustle is increasing. You've got the, the carts out, the vendor carts out on the side. So, you know, they park their cart sort of on the side of the street and other people are yelling at them because they can't get around and, you know, go, do you have a permit for that kind of thing? And the, the, the guy's like, go, the, you know, go talk to the Duke or whatever. So, you know. Sit on rotate. Yeah. Do you have a permit for this fruit cart? <laughs> <laughs> My cabbages. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So, um, give me a quick sec. You are attacked by wombats. Wombats! Oh, God. It's a wombat combat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, I would like everybody but Clank to roll a d20 and just give me the result. Marcia is Marcia. Eight! Oh, God! Seven. Six. Really? Okay. <laughs> We're rocking with the eight. <laughs> All right, I've got a six. <laughs> yep. Good job. Um, Good job. Now I'd like the three of you to roll perception. Did you not just see these eight, seven, six? Blue to oh god! Oh god! I'm Marcia. I'm too busy looking around at all the cool shit. Nineteen. <laughs> Nine. Seventeen. Okay. At least you guys are there. Um. Ruckus, you're, you're right. walking around. You're short. You catch the the smell of something. <clears throat> smells really, really delicious. And then you 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 look down and you realize my badge of the berserker. Fuck, where the hell did that go? You look around, you see halfling taken off. What's a badge of the berserker? That's the that's item. I a, got the item he got first level. Okay, that's the thing that allowed you to do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> skill challenge. Thief. <laughs> I don't think you can get a roll. Because you don't have a next slot item. Ah. Not that halfling jumped pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive. He they was are probably nimble. standing on the edge of a fruit cart. You don't know how he did it, you just know that he did. Or at least that he's running away very... Um, <laughs> that fruit cart or one of our accomplice. Yeah, he's clearly in on it. We need to beat him down. <laughs> okay, so let's start off here. Need some serious act justice. 
Well, considering you are, that you have your oath. <laughs> and I am an Avenger. And he is running. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rucka, since you noticed, and since it's your um, uh, badge of the Berserker, you get to go first. It's called Athletics, and it's called He's Not Getting Away. <laughs> All right. 22. Wow. Oh, sorry, 24. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> noticing that it's missing, you take off with a bound, and you start making your way through the crowd. Uh, crowd? They're, <laughs> they're getting away from me if they're smart, because I'm going <laughs> through them. Yes. An angry org. Yes. If they, if they see the you, way. they're getting out of the way. If they don't see you, they're still well, out of the way. trains coming. Oh, no. <laughs> Ruckus is not being quiet right now. He's yeah. yelling obscenities and pretty much doing the colon of, if I catch you, I'm going to crush you. If I catch you, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Put you in my stew. You can have half of the stew. You're a bite-sized morsel, and I will dine on half of yeah. it. <laughs> and, 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 um... Delicious halfling soup. Uh, Ruckus's battle cry was, is tenderized, by the way. <laughs> God. <laughs> terrifying. That is terrifying. <laughs> All right. Um, so you, as you uh, bound after the halfling, he's ducking under fruit carts and he's making his way, you know, hopping up, uh, like parkouring off of, um, um, what do you call, flower boxes. And you're chasing him, but he's actually pretty quick for a little guy. Um, Clank, you see um, Ruckus go... Take off like a bat out of hell. My badge! And then just start yelling obscenities and just bolting through the crowd, pushing people aside. You get the fa- you get the feeling that somebody stole something and he's pissed. Well, he did yell thief. Hmm. I do have this fancy new sword that teleports people to me. <laughs> can, I use, can I make an attack with my weapon and then try to haul them in with the encounter or the, uh, the ability? Or is that outside the bounds of a skill challenge? Cause <laughs> yeah, because it's Nor- really just normally, skills. Yeah, no, normally I would bend rules for things like that. The argument can be made right now that there are too many people, there's too many yeah. objects in between. Yeah. Cetera, you, cetera. Grab, you grab like a fruit cart by accident. <laughs> My God, is too risky. <laughs> too risky. I'm, I'm going to say that you, you're perceptive enough to be like, okay, yeah, I could do that, but I'm going to kill people in the process. The best. Okay. Well, in that case, oh, I, I'm going to attempt to use my intimidate skill to clear a path for Ruckus. Nice. <laughs> so I'll run around behind him, like blaring at max volume, and attempting to clear a path. <laughs> okay. All right. Give that a try. <laughs> He's lights was raving behind you. <laughs> He's lights was raving behind you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to rave on me. They all coming through. Fine. Uh, 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 Thirteen. The most diplomatic of intimidates I've ever seen. That's, I'm so that's not gonna do it. So. You're tracking. You're tracking <laughs> more of a It's like, oh, a fancy machine. No, not, not quite. <laughs> so you're you're going up uh, behind Ruckus, trying to like warn people ahead of him to get out of his way and clear the path. <laughs> Unfortunately. He is getting through quicker than you are, and he is making more of a ruckus than you are. <laughs> so people are paying more attention to his, like, yelling and growling and throwing of people than to your, clear the way! <laughs> All right. Excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me. <laughs> Ma'am? Ma'am? <laughs> Friswin, you've, uh... <laughs> You've seen Ruckus take yeah. off in a hurry yeah, and Clank did. attempt to uh, help him out by clearing out a path. I need to use some endurance to catch up. <laughs> that you can do. Definitely. Because it's going to power on through. 20. <laughs> All right. So you you see the, the little guy and you're like, oh, okay, he's being sneaky. He's going ducking under cars and stuff. He's like, you're, you're like, I can get into some places Ruckus can't. Yeah. And so you just start going for it. Now, you may not be the fastest in the world, but you are not. <laughs> but he will not be able to outrun you because you da, 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 da. have... Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's going to you, yeah. you are going with yeah. your, you know, uh, absolute, uh, like, nothing can stop your determination after Go this forward. guy. Yeah. Um, what are the natural sprinters? <laughs> 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 that they are. Marizia. All right, well, I'm not going to be able to run fast enough to catch up to anybody. So I'm going to ask the people around me for help. Okay. Like, guards, guards, the thief, help. Sure. What skill are you using? Diplomacy. Diplomacy. Okay. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's not a combat 25. roll, so she did well. Woohoo! Right, how much? <laughs> 25. Wow. <laughs> oh, dear! <laughs> So I can't hear a tale about the feast. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, right there. Uh, so oh, somebody please think of the children. Yeah. So the always with the children. Oh, Delicate, the attractive, children. high elf goes. Yeah. There's a thief. Guards <laughs> help. And the guards immediately go. Someone's in trouble. I'll help you, ma'am. And so, <laughs> so our now I'm picturing is like a b- bunch of guards just leaning on their pole and watching <laughs> the halfling go by. Yes. Watching ruckus go by. Yes. Like, yes. And then. <laughs> And then, feed, feed them. Oh, oh, hello! Guards and Lieutenant Jack, where are you? Really <laughs> so they, that sounds very accurate, sadly. So they said, I'll give me away! Go on, please. One of the, one of the, one of the guards. Like, wait, where is he? <laughs> one, one of the guards goes over to um, uh, a hitch post. Uh, apologizes to the person standing there, grabs the horse, official business, puts you up in one arm, swings you up onto the horse with him, and Yay! takes off down the street after the, after the thief. Awesome. <laughs> All right, your turn. High adventure. <laughs> and since you're on the horse, you get to go first. <laughs> so you you are gaining on this little guy. Um, he He's running, and then he takes a sharp left. Uh, down an alleyway. All right, perception to see where where he's going and pointing it out to the guardsman on the horse. Sounds good. Oops. Steering thing. <laughs> she has a decent perception. I do. Uh, that's thirteen. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're like, I swear I saw him go that go that way. And the guard's like, No, no, he's over here. He's over, he's over that way. And then, then you're like, No, that's a dwarf. I, it's a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> That's my friend! What are you doing? <laughs> so there's a, a, a momentary confusion as you're trying to figure out where they went. <laughs> Mercy. Mama's a man. There you go. Glenn. We've already had you take care of the children so, before. Yes. It didn't end well. Before. <laughs> it didn't end well. Um, yeah. Hail the different emperor. Game. Oh, hail the emperor. Um, before your turn, I'm just going to have you quickly roll a perception roll to see, because you were behind Ruckus, to see if you saw the guy take his left. I rolled a five. Modified? Uh, that's probably like a six. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Clank is the most perceptive sentry six. ever. <laughs> okay. 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 Four. Four. okay. Um, depending on how well you do, I'll... Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, what I was going to do anyway is, knowing... What he does mm-hmm. about the magical aura of this item, True. Clank is going to do an arcana check to try and detect it. Go for it. Perfect. Well then. That would be 15. 15. Oh yeah, that's lots. Uh, 26. There nice. Go. <laughs> if that fails, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That that succeeds. Um, so you look around and you know, you so you uh, sort of squint your eyes, you fade your vision a little bit, um, and you're looking around, and you can see, you know, that noble over there's got something magical, something magical, something. That's the one I'm looking for. Familiar, familiar, and, familiar magical. and magical. It it has taken a left, uh, and it is down an alleyway just just ahead. So you you have that information. Right. Well, Clank is going to check that out. Uh... <laughs> The magical energy of the necklace is going that way! <laughs> okay, plus one to whoever uh, rolls next. Okay. Ruggis. Now, I'm not so, trained in this, but I'm using it anyway. Nice. Streetwise to go through a house that I think will lead to cutting off the halfling. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. <laughs> Keep the doors closed, it won't be long. <laughs> You get the plus one, and I'm going to make this a moderate instead of a hard DC check, because I think it looks cool. Nice. nice. So that's 17, 13, uh, 18. <laughs> no problem. So, <laughs> so you, you, hear, you hear Clank go, it's going that way. You glance back a bit, you see where he's pointed, and you're like, I'm on it. I'm going to take a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you, you, <laughs> so you, you go just James like, Bond did. Yes. You did. Yeah. yeah, he went through the little hole. You went right through the fucking wall. Yeah. <laughs> so, as you get up to the house, the person opens the door to go out. <laughs> Stand aside. You run okay. all the way through okay. the house, bust through their back door, and you come right, uh, right up next to the little half leg who goes shit and takes off the run. <laughs> all right, 
You're almost there, Riswin. Uh, you are up. Aww. So you just. No, I'm, I'm gonna dwarf a ninja. I'm gonna do some parkouring off the uh, rooftops. <laughs> there you go. I see these happen memes all the time. Clang! <laughs> yes, well. I was sitting here going, nail it, nail it, nail it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she so nailed it. Yeah, into the so wall. You, okay, so you're like, I got this. He went through, I'm going over. So you go up to the building and you start climbing <gasps> the, um, <gasps> the, the east trough. <laughs> The eaves trough, which pulls away from the building and lands you back on your butt. You have to stand back up again. Why is this always happening to me? <laughs> Didn't say a word about me weight. <laughs> you think the orc is scary? I should may have had that second to think. <laughs> Ruggis, you are within damn near grabbing distance of that halfling. And he is um, making his way ahead basically do- dodging uh, between obstacles in the alley. I, 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 I'm going space. to be doing that leaping tackle maneuver. <laughs> leaping tackle. A 7 foot 3, 240 pound orc on a small half leg. <laughs> Sounds like an athletic check to me. Yeah. Yes. So it's epic. 21. No, yes. Yes, 12 20, plus 9 yes. is 21. 21. 21. So <laughs> you you see that that halfling here like oh, you just say one thing mine you will launch yourself forward with absolutely no regard of how you're going to land it doesn't matter why would I you almost <laughs> overshoot I the halfling myself with his halfling <laughs> <laughs> you almost overshoot the halfling you grab him by the scruff of the neck as you fly by and push him under you to land on him you body slam him into the ground at the end of the alley. Way. He is dazed. <laughs> Don't I work as I'll heal you? <laughs> you get up. Don't worry, something soft broke my fall. <laughs> you get up, you pick him up with one hand, and take back your. Um, uh, Whatever that thing was called. Badge of the Berserker. Badge of the Berserker. Your MacGuffin. <laughs> your happy necklace of prettiness. He. He is, well, one, he's dazed from being tackled like crazy from... Just passing through. Just passing by. You know, just passing by. And two, he is in his pants <laughs> thinking, I should not have stolen from this guy. Yeah, really. Of <laughs> all the people on the street to steal from, he's like... The orc. The orc's dumb. That looks so like... Yeah, that that looks not, not perceptive. Exact, mm-hmm. That's exactly what he was thinking. He's like, dude's not paying attention. And well, that was true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. He was like, so I smell tacos. What? <laughs> My necklace! <laughs> He's being, um, we'll, we'll say dragged with his face against the wall all the way out. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Just um, <laughs> Clank is just sort of homing in on the, ma- on the magical signature. I look down at the halfling. I look up at Ruckus. From your horse. And I'm on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> the, look at your party member. Hey, get to think of that! Oh, and back at your party member. Then back at me. <laughs> <laughs> the necklace is, is now diamonds. Is, is, the, is, is the guard there on the horse? Guard is there is, on the is horse. Is he obviously a guard? Very obviously Unceremoniously a guard. Unceremoniously throwing the halfling at the, the base of the horse and being like, Come! Just <laughs> <laughs> The guard looks down at you. Looks over at Marzia, who smiles. <laughs> Looks down at the... Thank you, brave sir. <laughs> He's so <laughs> good at that dwarf thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and he, look the same to me. he lets Marzia off the horse and looks back at Rex and goes, Thank you. Uh, Ruckus. R- Ruckus. <laughs> That's just, thank you for that. And he basically gets off the horse, ties him up, because he doesn't have, like, you know, like, no modern handguns or whatever, ties him up, tosses him back on the horse, Tips his hat and rides off with somebody else's horse. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> back to the guy whose horse he confiscated. Oh, thank you for the ride. Hopefully, back, but yes. It's not the ride he wanted at all. <laughs> no. no. It is. But now he's got, got something entertaining to do, so. <laughs> something. You guys gotta work on your stamina. <laughs> Walk fast. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ride a horse here. <laughs> it was the easiest thing. Alright, so. So you guys are now near the center of town. Um, for better or worse, you've made your way uh, towards the middle. Um, there is a large, ornate fountain in the middle. 
Um, and there are many little stands set up. Uh, it's, it's a marketplace. Basically, you know, picture any nice market you've ever been to, you know, buy word market, whatever. There, this is just huge compared to, to that. And there are stalls with almost anything you can think of. There are also storefronts along the, the store. Are so there stalls anything, with fancy hats? You can definitely find one. Absolutely. So Clint if you guys... <laughs> If you guys want any, want to pick up any equipment or anything, any any anything, anything. Back up strings from at least. <laughs> Better get two. Better get two. <laughs> and some polish. And some polish. Yes, or some polish. Just, polish, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> or some badger on a stick. <laughs> so, okay. When, why Nick's saying that? I'm going to take a quick aside for this. So they sent out uh, the, the most recent newsletter. Um, and, there, you know, all things that you can do around the city in the upcoming months. And one was um, this, like, you know, French course or whatever. And it says, polish up your French. But because it's capitalized, it's polish, polish up, up your, your French. French. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at that. I'm like, I always want to learn Polish. <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing was, I'm like, okay, um, I... I English up my French sometimes when I speak it by accident, and I French up my English sometimes as a joke, but I guess if I wanted to be fancy, I could learn to Polish my French. <laughs> <laughs> and did the people at your work actually, like, when you, Take that brought, really it, when well, you brought it to their attention, were you like, hey, look, I Polish. Wait, I waited until after they sent it to 50,000 people before I told them. <laughs> no, uh, no, the thing is that that is proper. It is correct. It is, it is, it is correct, because... Yes. You can't just not capitalize the word. Yeah, you can't just not capitalize the first word in a sentence. It was the first word in that sentence, and so it has to be capitalized. But polish is also the only word in the English language, at least the one that I know of, that um, changes both pronunciation and meaning with capitalization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I first pointed it out, she was like, oh, crap, I made a typo. I'm like, no, no, oh. it's not a typo. <laughs> like, just oh, humorous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so is there anything that you guys would like to do in town? Um, I mean, the you got probably about an hour or two before the markets wrap up for the day, and then you guys will have to, you know, find a place to stay. But it should not be hard around here. What are you doing? Getting a hat? Hat shopping. Okay. And also chef's hat shop. Ooh. Uh, I'm looking for food supplies. If we're going on a boat, I don't want to eat any salty fish for multiple days. So barrel of pork, barrel of anything that'll last on the sea other than fish. Okay. Barrel apples. Fair enough. Or Clank doesn't have to worry. But about she's you. easily spent about eh, ten gold on food. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna, like a king. I'm, I'm gonna say that you're likely to find something, but we're gonna we're gonna roll all that in a sec to find out exactly what you find. Um, Marzia, Hi. any... Well, I'm going to look for um, any books I can find that talk about those ruins we're heading to, or that ancient city. Good job picking up books. Yeah. We'll need that for when we go to the bathroom. Yeah, and it's right, extra writing paper for later. <laughs> okay. Riswin, anything you want in the big city? I'm looking for ale. <laughs> Mead. Stout. Anything Stout. I can use to kill my liver. <laughs> I've been waging a war against it since I was a wee lad. <laughs> I'm going to go out like my parents did. <laughs> Drunk like a dwarf! In a brew of glory. <laughs> yeah, right. Of glory. <laughs> that is awesome. Alright. Okay, so, um, let's see. Um, let me just see skills. So you're, 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 you're trying to find alcohol for the trip or alcohol for the day? Um, both. Oh, God. Oh, good. <laughs> a bunch of sailors with <laughs> <and> booze! <laughs> If they take me booze, they're going overboard. <laughs> we'll sail the ship ourselves. Now, which was the front? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to port. Let's stop it. I said it's port. <laughs> no, I want, that's why I stole my port. <laughs> that's why I stole my port. <laughs> stay away from my port. That's stubborn. <laughs> you stay away from it, too. <laughs> I hate that, too. I can't drink starboard. What the hell is starboard? <laughs> All right, it's well, a mixture of pork. Let's throw in some skill rolls. So, Nick, um, pick a skill that you think is going to help you find the, the nice, the fanciest hat. Make well, it hilarious. <laughs> well, there's well, streetwise. Streetwise. It is streetwise. Streetwise is the only relevant skill. Yeah, I, I would say that you could also, diplomatic. You could also, I believe in your power. You could also use perception to look at the, you know, the stuff as you. All of the these things are one. <laughs> okay, then I'll use them. I know what I'm doing. To find the fanciest. Hat shop because everyone knows you're free to get a pop hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to use Streetwise because that is the only thing that makes any sense. Okay. 
So it's it's an easy DC. It, this is a place with shops all over the place. You will yes. definitely find a hat. Somebody it's just will... how fancy is your hat going to be at this point? Yeah. Twelve plus. Thirteen on Streetwise. No problem. Okay, so <laughs> it's you're... not exactly hard to be like, "Excuse me, sir, direct me to the gentleman's hat shop." Absolutely. <laughs> so, for robots, <laughs> gentle bots, <laughs> gentle bots, gentle bots. <laughs> so you, um, wait. Before you guys uh, all split up, are you setting a meeting place or anything? Probably I'm assuming so, but the docks. You know, back at this fountain where we actually know where the fuck it is. Yes. <laughs> That is in the middle of the square. Right? Sounds good. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so you you know take a take a walk around. <laughs> run as, <markets! laughs> you you come across a couple of uh, different clothiers that have little stands out in the in the open area. They don't seem to have hats, but you ask them, and oh yeah, well, you know uh, there, there's a shop. Bill's hats yeah. over on fourth, <laughs> exactly, and Joe's hats over on fourth, uh, and then there's Meg's hats. Actually, it's in the hat it's district. It's all the hat district. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right by the hammock district. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you head down to the hat district and you find yourself a nice hat shop. Um, and I'm going to say that uh, you pretty much have your pick of hats. Sweet. I look for the fanciest, most ostentatious slash awesome hat they have. Hmm. Right. As many feathers as they can fit on the brim. <laughs> Pimped out, gilded. It's the most dapper hat. But I want it to be seen. like, I don't want it to be like gaudy and horrible. No, no. No, it's, it's got to be like the and bling down. It's got to be the most pimped out top hat you've ever fucking seen. It could be a top hat. It could be a top hat. Mm. It could be a fancy hat. It'd be awesome if it was a top okay. hat. Much more Apparently, class. fashion sense has changed a bit in the last X number of hundred years since you were deactivated. <laughs> You're having trouble finding what you would consider to be a high class hat, but you do find some decent hats. You um, you, you see, you know, a, a fairly regular looking top hat. There's some bowlers, or there's a fedora. Um, you know, you don't have anything that you know really has any bells and whistles and crazy things. You know that that make it all fancy, but you you can find yourself a respectable. What what's your choice out of the gentleman's the, hat? Is this the only hat shop in town, or like, can I continue to look for a, a, a more, a better fit, or is this like as it, as far as it goes, as far as hats in this town? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll make the round of the table, and then if you want to make another roll on it, and I'll make another roll on it, and we can see what we end up with. Excellent. Okay. I peruse the hats. You peruse. Unsatisfied by their Unsatisfied wares. Unsatisfied by the wares. <laughs> okay. Um, Ruckus. Nature roll. Let's see what you find for for provisions for the trip. Thirteen. All right. So. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. Okay, so at first, as you're going around, you know, you're finding lots of delicious and wonderful and amazing foods, but none of them keep on the sea. And so they direct you to, you know, supplies shops that are down closer to the docks. So you head down closer to the docks, and you go in, it's like salted fish, salted pork, salted badger, salted... And you're like, this is all kind of bland... You could get non-fish, I guess. Um, you get the feeling that um, you'll have to do either a little bit more looking or maybe a bit of your own spicing. So yeah, spicing. Perhaps. I, I trust my own cooking ability. Find some there foods. you go. Badger, pork, beef. <laughs> badger, pork, beef. <laughs> That's what he says. He goes up to the counter with badger, pork, beef. So you want a... Poor badger, <laughs> whatever. That is. It's like a turducken. Yeah, right? I yeah. got it. <laughs> so, all right. So, we'll we'll come back for a second set of rules in there to see how well you do with spicing your own stuff. You're gonna have to go around to a couple of the spice markets and you know deal with it. But you've got all you've got the the whole evening if you need. Um, Marzia, bookshops, bookshops. All right, streetwise to ask around for bookshops. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's not that's that roll. That's correct. What was that? That's a twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you I'm, I'm going to call the rolling on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you you ask around for bookshops, and they're like, "Oh, no, no, no. you 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 don't need bookshops. You need bookshop." They point you to just on the edge <laughs> of the bookshop. nobles district because nobles tend to be able to spend money on books. Yeah, there is. I can, I can afford some nice books. There is a combination um, town library knowledge center slash bookstore. That is with you a know, teeny tiny coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ye old with chapters. a teeny tiny like we're talking like 
We're, we're talking Istanbul style, like espresso shop. That nice. is what we're Slashy. talking about. You know, with the, uh, with the like outdoor, this outdoor patio with the, the nice fancy umbrellas and the, and the whole nine yards, a little fenced off kind it's of area to keep the, uh, <laughs> you know what? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I had half a mind to name one of the cities that. I'm like, nah. Well, you already have Hyderabad. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, so yes, you find the place. Um, it will not be cheap. Oh my but god! You Burks. get, but you get the feeling that if you spend enough time looking in here, you will definitely find something that will help you guys. On that specific ancient. Absolutely city. yes. Okay, Riswin. I would like to use my endurance to uh, taste test. <laughs> 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 You're not just gonna taste test here. Taste chug. Taste chug. Okay. Does it go down smooth? Is what exactly. Asking. It needs to go down smooth because I'm gonna be on the high seas. Can't have anything that's gonna be a little too tipsy. Sloshing around. Exactly. <laughs> All right. It's not good for your stomach. Give it a roll. Let's see. I'm gonna give you a plus two. Give it a roll and see what you end up with. Due to your dwarven drunk. Uh, that'd be a twenty nine. 31? <laughs> okay. Yeah! You, you don't just... I don't know the noble dish and be like, no, 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 no noble here. bullshit. You, you go over and you're like, where's the best ale in town? Where's the ale smith? Where's the, yes, where's the ale smith? I command the city of ale smith. It turns out that there's a dwarven... Uh, yes, a, the best kind of ale. Right? There's a dwarf who runs a tavern, and he actually has a stand set up in the open area. You go over and explain what's going on. You're like, you know, we're heading on the high seas. I need something that's going to be able to calm my stomach. I need something that's going to be a very good, strong ale. And so he's like, well, we've got many different types. And so you just tell him that you want to do a taste test. And he's like, you know what? Let's make a thing of this. <laughs> drinking contest! <laughs> so, Every ten minutes there's a drinking contest with this damn fire. <laughs> the guy's so already they, As soon as he says it, um, assistants come from seemingly out of nowhere, bringing out tables, setting things up, and basically you've just gotten yourself into a drinking contest, and... You grab it, whoever it is. It's a wonderful conversation. I, 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 I. <laughs> you absolutely nail it. Oh, God. So it goes on for the entire duration of however long these guys are doing their thing. You're not even really feeling the effects other than, you know, this is a pretty awesome town. I like it here. And in the end, you end up finding uh, an ale that you really like, that you are absolutely sure that you are taking with you. And when you come back this way, you're grabbing another barrel and setting up a trade route so that the tavern has this stuff on tap all the time. Damn right. It's delicious dwarven sailing ale. So you, um, you need it. Goes You're gonna through. go sailing. You need sailing ale. <laughs> so you put in an, an order for um, two barrels of it, um, and you say that you'll come back once you guys have booked your ship and uh, tell them where to have it uh, delivered. We're gonna go uh, back to Clank for his hat shopping. Let's try another round, shall yes. we? Yes. Hmm. Clank is going to attempt to use Intimidate on these people trying to sell him shoddy hats to see where the superior hat shop is located. They must be concealing the location of the superior hat Shame shop Shame them into in, attempt, in an attempt to get his business. I'm going to say, unfortunately, this will be a hard DC, but you can try it. Clank will try. Because these tend to be very, fairly nice shopkeepers, but yeah, give it a shot. Four! Plus something, but four! <laughs> the first shop... Wouldn't it be a shame if your shop burned down? Yes, that would be a shame. Luckily, I'm insured, friend. Would you like to see this hat? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, it's more like you walk up to the guy and you're like... So that's a these... 12 in the end. <laughs> yes, but on a hard DC, that's not going to do it. So... These hats are insufficient. Show me better hats. And as you become more belligerent and more, like, you think you're intimidating. He thinks you're belligerent. <laughs> he eventually calls for the guards and has you removed from his store. No. Thankfully, the guards just, you know, uh, they're used to having rowdy people in <laughs> Robot the... rowdies. <laughs> Not robot rowdiness. I doubt any of them have ever actually seen a metal man. But um, you're removed... From the store, you can go to other stores, but you won't be allowed back in that. Right. Frank goes off to find his hat in a slightly less crappy establishment. <laughs> that place sucked anyway. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, hat shop? Blackjack. 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 
<laughs> so, I guess you've um, <laughs> you've acquired different types of meat, um, and now you're heading off to the spice market to get some preservatives that are better than just salt um, to try and yeah. make something that you can. Wait, we're done. Yeah. Nature perception for this. Hmm. Perception. There's got to be a spice shop that stands out from the rest of them because it's not just like we have sage. Mm. <laughs> I can probably do dried herbs. Yeah. Nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So you are making your way down the street with your barrel in tow of uh, different meats, <laughs> and as you're going, you're like, you know, amateurs, amateurs, I'm crappy little spice shop, and then you see it at the end of this one street on a corner. Overlooking the town square, this place has um, outdoor tables with individual sections with dozens of spices. They they not only have dozens of spices, they have multiple different varieties of each spice. So if you go to paprika, you've got your regular paprika, you've got your Muldoon paprika, you've got your your smoked paprika. You, you know they've got all the different um, iterations. They even have. Fresh herbs that you know. If you or want, fresh paprika. <laughs> or fresh paprika. They or don't grow paprika. Orcus paprika is just like grass. No, orcus paprika is salt. <laughs> <laughs> they use Same it. thing as orcus pepper. Orcus can <laughs> They use it to salt the earth and their food and everything else around them. Yep. So yes, you find the best spice shop that you have ever seen. You. You have to hold yourself back not to just drop your entire life savings at this one shop. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Um, now, speaking of which, I don't have loot tables in front of me, just uh, for my own knowledge. Roughly how much gold do you guys have? Um, I can tell you exactly. 236 gold pieces and 162 silver pieces. So, is that again 201? 36. Gold. 162 wow. silver. Yeah, you're banking way more than me. Yeah, I only have 114 gold. Banking. Holy crap. Yeah, I have 111 gold and 237 silver. I'm going to buy all the old books. Yeah, well, she's Marzi is going to need the most money to get, <laughs> you know, ancient tomes of knowledge off <laughs> those guys. Um, all right, so we're going to say that Ruckus, when all was said and done, you needed... Two gold, which is, you know, a lot to these folks, but not exactly a lot to you. So two gold got you your um, barrel and uh, of uh, uh, meats, okay. and another uh, two gold worth of spices. You can make it four if you want to have spices to... Uh, yes. Okay, then make it <laughs> four. And I'm going to say that aside from spicing this barrel, you can use those extra spices <clears throat> for... Four more meals. Excellent. So if you want to write that down, um, something that I've been toying with, and I'll, I'll talk about the details with you later, is uh, I was thinking of turning uh, one of the daily meals into sort of a, a Ruckus Cooks Things minigame. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, I, I mean, could be interesting to give uh, bonuses or detriments to the party as, as needed. None Plus, of these things affect Clank. No. <laughs> Unless they oil up his... Gears with the grease from the meal or something. <laughs> All the bacon grease. <laughs> they, they clog up your olfactory se- uh, sensors because the it was really, really smelly fish. Um, you get a minus one on smell perception. <laughs> I didn't get to roll on smell perception last time. <laughs> um, so, um, Clank, we're going to say that basically what, what you're left with at this point is the original shop that you went into that has hats... But not super fancy hats. So you can pick up a hat to upgrade later, but at this point, you've got just your standard hat types. You've got a, a standard uh, um, uh, top hat, standard bowler, regular, you know. Uh, I think we get the nicest uh, hat they have. It doesn't look shit. What what do you consider? Like, I, I don't know your taste in hats. Like, honestly, to, to player player. I'm. Mm, uh, like, whatever looks dapper in this in this case. Okay. So, like, whatever whatever the nobles are wearing, Nowadays. or whatever Clank remembers nobles Robo-top wearing. Robocop hat with feather. Yep, yes. Okay. It'll look boss. Um, the fanciest hat. The fanciest hat you find um, costs four whole gold for a hat. But 
you're fairly sure that uh, that this is you know what the nobles of at least this town are wearing. Inflation, man. Inflation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For gold, three hundred years ago, I could have bought a castle. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, <laughs> Back in my day, and had enough left over for a bag of chips too. <laughs> so yes, um, it, for flavor, you know, on your own, email me what you want that to look like, and we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, Marzia for books. Merks. Mm-hmm. Um, If I have time, I'll look for books on dragons too, but I imagine those are pretty rare. You found some fairy tales. Yay. <laughs> okay. So, you managed to find one tome in the very, very back that is, it, it is so covered in dust you almost missed it. You blow the dust off. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> it, some of the pages appear to be some of the pages actually appear to be blank. Um, <laughs> but you do in this book in this book written in a language that you're not actually able to read. Oh, oh yes. The what's nice about it is that there are maps. There Those are are pictures of the city. Excellent. You recognize um, uh, at least the that it's definitely the city that's being talked about because as you flip through it, you see other cities, you see dragons, you see fire, you see burning, you see this city, you see dragons, you see this city still standing. The pictures tell me everything I need. To yeah, you've basically got you know the picture book part of it. Yeah, um, and there are maps. <laughs> And there are maps, but the maps indicate locations that... It's a pop-up book. You pull up the fucking dragon. Like, ah! <laughs> you get the little town. And little town. You pull the dragon. Like, ah! dragons, like, fire so, comes out of it. And, and yes, awesome. this refers to places that may or may not still exist in a language that you may or may not find somebody that can read. Yeah. No, well, maybe they have a book on languages. <laughs> Easy translation <laughs> guide. Do you have Here's dead the languages for dummies? <laughs> Here's the downside. It's a reference book, but they will let it go for 60 gold. That hurts, but I'll do it. Okay. I wouldn't even pay 60 gold for it. No, I paid for that. It's got maps. I'm that. It's a rabbit. I wouldn't pay 60 gold for something I couldn't eat. <laughs> Alright, so book with How much gold would you pay for unicorn? Take it all! <laughs> <laughs> And yes, do they have a Dead Languages for Dummies book? <laughs> dead Languages? Like, Rosetta Stone, Dead Language Edition. I don't know, the um, city's been ancient Find out the secret known by a, discovered by a mom that's pissing off all the linguists. <laughs> <laughs> this one secret tip. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> no, the government sent me this check, all for learning dead languages. <laughs> no, but you do see a strange gentleman wearing a red scarf who's pretty drunk. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, un- <laughs> unfortunately, as far as the folks in this library are concerned, um, Elvin is a dead language. <laughs> Elvin, <laughs> only because they don't have many Elvish books, and for some reason they haven't had many elves come through here. So, Elvin. yeah, they you don't. are a dead language. They don't. Oh. Um, they also have a book that keeps saying, "Don't put your dick in it." <laughs> that so, is what's in every page. There's 200 pages of "Don't put your dick in it." Or else he's off stick a dick and crazy. <laughs> yes. Don't stick a dick and dragon. Yeah. Don't stick a dick in it. So, uh, unfortunately, no. Um, they don't <laughs> really have much on the language guides. No, at this point in history, it doesn't seem like anybody has really bothered to sit down and write translation yeah. guides. I guess I'll have to. You know. There you go. go Something to do. Quit adventuring and... Uh... Yeah. Reswin. On board is So yes. you have just... Absolutely own faced at a drinking contest. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. You're pr- feeling very good about yourself. You've acquired some of, some of the best mead that you've ever had. Actually, no, sorry, I would like to try to acquire ale. some knowledge. This is That's actual right. ale. Yes, like this dwarven ale, the proper ale. Dwarven ale, not just proper. mead, not just stout, proper, proper ale. ale. Yes. Um, but you've run out your time. There, the, if you want to acquire any anything other than 
uh, a cure for this hangover, <laughs> you're probably going to have to meet up with the group uh, at this point now because mm. you've, you've spent most of the day drinking. But uh, it was a worthwhile uh, endeavor. Um, Marcus, did we roll on you to see you, how successful you were in, in integrating this place? Nope. Just do a basic nature roll. It'll be an easy DC. 19. Yeah, okay, so you're fine. So you've, you you even found uh, a place that would let you temporarily use their kitchen. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how you convinced them. Excuse me, I'm a wandering book. Could I use your kitchen? Convince is a very, very strong word. Use your kitchen. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but you managed it. So we're going to say that you guys, having all had fairly... Decently successful days, except maybe Clank. Um, make your way towards the town center and meet up at the fountain. Um, evening is falling. The merchants are packing up their little stands in the town center. Um, and, uh, you know, night is coming. You guys should probably find a place to stay. I know this amazing inn. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I lead the way to the dwarven inn where the ale is to get more ale. <laughs> it's not an ale. It's, it's not an inn. It's a brewery. I lead him to the brewery. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can I sleep on your floor and drink your booze? No. <laughs> Go away. This isn't an inn. It's a form of inn. There's a roof, isn't there? <laughs> There's a roof, isn't there? He stands in a corner and you lie on the floor. We can get her some hay. What? There's ale. Elves in the hay. Bed of hay. Bed of hay. Elves in the hay. Or we can go looking for an actual inn. And you can take some ale to go. There are plenty of different inns and I to go to boarding the other houses inns. and bed and breakfasts. <laughs> and inns. The inferior inns. To um, look at their inferior ale. <laughs> You're not going to be doing much more drinking tonight, I tell you. What? I'm huh? gnome <laughs> flinger. I was trying to look for a hat to see if there was like an, a, an actual, and then I was clicking through, and there's an item called the gnome flinger. Its category is lodging. Its price is 500 gold pieces. Its description is: stairs are far too pedestrian and time-consuming for the average tinker gnome. The gnome flinger is a small catapult designed for rapid travel to and from <laughs> upper floors and tall structures. <laughs> The cost includes the system of nets and pads necessary to ensure a safe landing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, no mission inventors. How awesome they are. Uh, you don't the want to gnome climb flinger. All those stairs. <laughs> gnome flinger. I call my gnome flinger ruckus. <laughs> yup. A <At> poor halfling. <laughs> so yes, we can do Yeah, we'll go to an inn. Okay. Um. Hmm. Do you guys have a preference of whether you want to be in town or down by the docks or down by the docks? docks. We're going to need to talk to some sailor. Maybe there'll be somebody at the inn who knows about traveling arrangements we could make. Yes, or where to find what's his face and who is it? The two sailor people we were looking for. (laughs) Maximus and Calissa. Yeah. (laughs) Clank remembers their name, even though I don't. (laughs) Yes. Clank has met them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so he knows who they are. Yes, he knows who they are. All right. And if they can't yeah. tell us where to find them, maybe they know some reputable captain who can ship us around. Yes. So you guys um, find an inn, dockside. Not shady. Not you find it. Not a, shady. You find a, a very reputable, very nice looking inn um, that actually doesn't seem terribly expensive either. Um, Called call- the cloak and dagger in your back. <laughs> 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 nope, it's the sleeping lobster. Sleeping oh, lobster. That's yes. the one that gets eaten. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeping lobster yeah. catches the fish. <laughs> no, the sleeping lobster yes. gets eaten the, for um, breakfast. They they actually do have a continental lobster breakfast because <laughs> told ya gets eaten for breakfast. Yep, yeah. um, and the, the place is quite nice. They have um, you know decent sized rooms for what you guys would expect from a, a higher end establishment. Um, and yeah, they're right. They're right dockside, and they have availability. You guys are all set to go. Excellent. Um, one gold a night each. Ooh, 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 it's pricey. It's pricey, but in this, this town, looks nice. yeah. If I find a halfling trying to steal my stuff, I expect that gold back. <laughs> well, maybe I expect you, to maybe take you it should, out of the hide of the halfling. Hey, maybe you should set up a bell by the door and have one of your team members <laughs> throw it at you. Oh, <laughs> I am not Xerix. I have no thievery. I have no engineering. No, <laughs> I do. 
<laughs> Are you going to set up a complex you, trap? No, she's going to steal his... <laughs> she's going to steal all his money since he doesn't have any fever. <laughs> and then I'm going to pin it on this halfling that I picked up from the bar I, I, and I, left I, in his room. You picked up... The the you slept with a halfling? No, I like no, literally he, picked him up. And no, no, no. <laughs> you see, you've been drinking all day. You pick up a halfling at the bar. It's hey, a completely different meaning. A little halfling, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just drunk to enough to think you're looking pretty good. <laughs> and he's just drunk enough to think a beard's a good thing on a woman. <laughs> so, not to have a beard. <laughs> that you, let, you're still that you let on. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're actually going to wrap up there for the night. Um, you guys have checked into the inn dockside. Um, and in the morning you guys can figure out if, uh, if Max and Calissa have ever made port here that anybody remembers um, and all the rest of that and go on your merry way in the Make direction you guys and so on. Yes. try to find a captain willing to sail to the dangerous city of whatever the fuck it was called I wrote it down <laughs> somewhere yeah uh, mm, so did I <laughs> <laughs> I wrote lots of things down Yes, I probably need to tell you how to spell it, because I don't think it has yes. very... Yeah, it was Acroteri or something like yeah, that? Yes, A-C-R-O-T-I-R-I. Yeah, that's not what I read. <laughs> T-I-R-O-T-I? I? Yeah, two I's. Acroteri. That's this. And Acroteri are said to be somewhere across the Sea of Ide, the E-Y-D-E. And they're east of the Cassirian Forest, C-A-S-S-E-R-I-A-N, Cassirian Forest. P-R-I-A-N? Yeah. C-A-S-S-T-R-I-A-N. Cassirian. Yeah, I got it. So amazing. All right. Back you must feed. In other words, feedback time. Brisman, you up. Oh, we're done? <laughs> <laughs> said we're, we're packing up. Oh, freak! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what <laughs> I was like, huh? Sorry, we're, I'm on the moon, wow. We're, we're wrapping up a little early. No, that's I, cool. I spent a lot of this week um, writing. <laughs> Trying to figure out my backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I ended yeah, up with cool. the, all of Nick's backstory, plus the four pages of text that I ended up reading at the beginning. Because <laughs> I wanted that intro to be pretty... Uh, uh, it was an epic intro. Yeah. Indubitably. No, it's, it was good. Fancy magic tricks. Yes. Everything. Yes. And, uh, I like pie. Wizard's still a jerk. I like pie. Wizard is still a jerk. Galen. <laughs> At least he has gained his name. <laughs> <laughs> at least you got to try and hit him. Yeah, I didn't get to try and hit him at all. Yeah, I had like oh a God, Bible wrapper on my polished. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can fling it at people. <laughs> I had a Bible wrapper on my axe. <laughs> my look changed Not color. Not a Bible, but okay. Bible axe. <laughs> I get gas in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I have axe poop. <laughs> the axe poop. Anything else to add? Yeah. Good time. Yep. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Woman, a few words. Any questions? No. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. Uh, we have to avoid sidetracking so much because we really went off the course. Well, this Frank, no, I, it, I, I, it, it I, actually I, played into John's lack of planning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. I, <laughs> it's not no, I, I actually um, specifically intended to let you guys go rogue a bit uh, on this session because in a lot of the previous sessions, uh, I was pushing you guys too much to uh, sort of follow along, and especially when it got to the end of last session, and I had to be like, you trip over a MacGuffin! I was like, alright, I gotta spend the next session letting these guys loose a little bit, you know. Um, so, uh, I'm glad that you guys took it and ran with it. I'm glad you guys got to laugh a lot and had a lot of fun. Um, but that, yes, that was definitely... There was a lot of character development, so that's was, what's important yeah. for a session like this. And I love the fact that Ruckus was actually the one who caught the halfling. Because anybody Everybody could have, you know, been rolling well at the end and whatnot, but that that turned out really. What's well. that? I'm terrible at streetwise. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I got a free horse ride. <laughs> yes, Yay! you did. I'm broke by a guardsman. Hooray! <laughs> you're used to it. You're wandering hands. You're, you're, you're one of those singers at the tavern, so you're used yeah, to a few too. wandering hands. There's always a grabbing hand somewhere. Clank, despite not getting your hat, or not, not getting as nice of a hat as you would like. I got a boring hat. You can uh, spruce it up as you go. 
I didn't say it was terribly boring. I just said that it wasn't, you know, you, you were looking for... Like the Splendor for a Tassel yeah. hat of awesomeness. Maybe we'll yes. find a super awesome hat in those rooms. That's Not to true. worry, we'll kill a man and take it off his dead corpse. That's it. All I'm picturing now is we get into this throne room and like there are riches all over the place, but Clank's just like... <gasps> and on the throne is a desiccated <laughs> skeleton with this amazing hat. And he's like... I must yeah. have it. I must have this hat. Take not a piece of gold from this room. I don't want the gold. I want that hat. <laughs> hmm. Well, I suppose I you... I did say gold. There's no gold on the hat. You okay. got lucky this time. <laughs> what did you guys think of the um, of the level two items and the, the dispensing of them? It's good. Yeah, right. very good. Yep, and... Uh, I'm yep. going to hit now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yep, definitely place to... To my guy, like that is definitely an, an ability that I can make use of. Mm-hmm. I feel very sorry for everything that's coming up against Ruckus that has to help. <laughs> that being said, um, it's only one of the weapons that got the bonus, or did both? Because some of my abilities actually matter with that, because that would technically be two magical items at that point. So I would oh, suggest that you only give it to um, one of the hammers, which is had, main. You had righty and tenderizer, or lefty and tenderizer. Lefty and tenderizer. <laughs> tenderizer got the uh, okay. Okay, so extra tender, I think. Yeah, because some of your abilities do require me to roll my offhand as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Fair. So, But almost all of my Lefty abilities off-hand. take off at tenderizer, and then yeah. the offhand damage is just the bonus. Fair. Okay, so yeah, tender, tenderizer's got it then. Okay. Um, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, I, I didn't want, uh, like, right from the beginning, like, very early on, I was chatting with Jim, and he was like, honestly, don't walk into Uncle Steve's place and have him be like, I got these crack hammers, this kopesh, and this loot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's pretty unlikely that he would happen to have, I mean, like, if we all use long swords, maybe. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But, but we're all using fancy things. Yeah, you guys are all using I just things. happen to have an executioner's axe. <laughs> Flying around. How fortuitous. Do you also have a co- why yes, <laughs> two <laughs> and two crack hammers. You know, like <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. It's it's always hard to distribute loot properly because sometimes you'll be like, oh, this character is so gonna want this item, and then it gets to it, and someone's like, oh, that's great, great for me, and you're like, uh, <laughs> I guess it's okay for you, but yes, yeah, so, I mean the teleport thing is obviously very. Uh, yeah, I thought you'd like that. Mm-hmm. I, I thought, actually, I, I'm hoping that you guys all uh, enjoy uh, the items that you got this time around. Yeah. I wanted I wanted to make them really cool because the, the first time around, I specifically want I, I I had this scene set out in mind since very early in the campaign. I didn't know when I was going to pull it out, but I definitely wanted Uncle Steve to you know bring you into his hidden loot room and give you. We guys got hand shit. me downs. Yay! Yay. <laughs> But their Uncle Steve's hand me down. Yeah, I got big brother's pants. I didn't get hand me down. All I did was polish my sword. <laughs> <laughs> Your sword that was magical to begin with. But that's you didn't even know there was yeah. a jackass wizard polishing for me. There must have been so much rust on that thing that you couldn't see the arcade. <laughs> Just like, yeah. there's such a thick oh, layer of rust on this. <laughs> Blood damage. The douchebag was who polished my sword. You guys all got like Uncle Steve's relics of awesomeness from his travels, and the wizard's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me clean this up. Despite despite the way that he was a jerk, he he did jog your memory about something, which is an important thing for you. Face strike weapon. Also, dragons are bad. Dra- yeah, dragons. Are <laughs> you just dragons are bad. No, I remember that from a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Dragons I still stand by creatures. our new mission to go hunt down that pegacorn. Pegacorn. Right. <laughs> and we will it's eat. a side mission. Yeah. yeah it's it's pegacorn. Pegacorn. You should look. You should see. You know, Ruckus' side quest. It was one of those achievements of eat dragon, eat Pegasus, eat unicorn, eat anything else that you find that is magical. Eat pegacorn. <laughs> Combination meat. meat. There's, a, there's a kraken. Where, oh, by the where way, is how much XP did we get for the thief encounter? <laughs> oh, good point. Uh, you guys are a little higher than you were last time. Well, you locked off a tentacle. Cook it. But it's a... Uh, I said cook it. Throw it. That was ramsy. Thank goodness. Yes, good also knocked over your phone and, and your my Blackberry and my iPod. Both. And the microphone. No, they're not. Microphone. Everything's just okay. dancing. They're not cracked. It's still good. Yay. Secure. Except my tuchus. <laughs> you broke my tuchus. It's such a funny word. It tuchus. is. It is a word. Tuchus. Mahogany. Mahogany. The desk was made of mahogany. Hooray. 
Do I say mahogany? <laughs> uh, poor Ray. <laughs> you hear about that? No. <laughs> have, you've seen, have you seen the Team Four Star where there's that big... Napa! Whatever it is. No. Like, anyway, there's a big dude, and he's like, my desk is made of mahogany. Okay. Oh, no, that's a... That's a... <laughs> he likes the word mahogany. He keeps saying mahogany. He, so he keeps saying mahogany. And then yeah. at one point, I don't know what it was, but Ray was saying mahogany for something... And every time he would say mahogany, some, some, someone he was, would, getting, yeah, he was making something. Yeah, yeah he was crafting yeah. mahogany something or other. You know, doing Jim something. Fun. Every and time he would say so he would say mahogany. And then every time two, he would laugh. Uh, monster <laughs> yeah, 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 like, each. Yeah. 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 That's how you do it. Yeah. He's like, okay, all right, that'll work. Do I mahogany weird? Because every time I say it, people laugh. Okay, so you guys each get um, 125 XP for the um, chasing down the heat. So that takes us to 1481. Just a heads up... you guys may or may not have noticed, or may or may not even know, the way that the DM guide goes for loot for a four-player party, uh, or actually even a five-player party, yeah. usually... Someone always gets excluded after that. This shaft. Yes. And you guys have had two levels in a row now where you guys have all gotten something. I'm um, basically taking from the monetary loot for this level to pay for the extra item. So you guys are probably going to end up fighting a bunch of lootless creatures for the next little while. What? You mean horrible sea monsters that come up from the depths don't have gold or magical items? <laughs> they, don't, they don't, oh, we are dead. Don't <laughs> 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 magical items before they die? <laughs> you saw the gold I swallowed last week. <laughs> it's not like those uh, death ravens in Di- Diablo that drop broad axes. You know? <laughs> no. Hey, a little bird! You kill it, it drops a broad axe. Like, Why did they still have that? these legendary <laughs> bracers? I don't know. Why wasn't it using it? <laughs> <laughs> That's my question. It's Stupid like, ghost. You're a murderer of a sentient being. You're like, ha! Drops two potions in the field. And you're like... Why are you Why is he chugging these pots? Are you wishing for death? Am I like advancing some kind of cult? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end it there. Thanks for joining us. Join us next time. Same bad time, same bad chat. <laughs>